Following my video series on airbrushes for scale modeling, I've received a number of questions regarding the Iwata RG3. So this video is my attempt to answer as many questions as possible about what the RG3 is and what it's not, how to set it up, and how to use it. I first became familiar with this airbrush back in the day when Iwata's catalog was only a fraction of the size it is today. It was initially produced as the RG2. And since then, the body casting has been updated, along with much improved cartridge style mechanicals, and redesignated as the RG3. It is today as it was then a round pattern airbrush in a spray gun form factor. It's basically the Iwata HPBE2 in a gun form. It's designed for painting larger areas like backgrounds. And the RG3 provides superior atomization over larger areas with more robust mechanical reliability and better ergonomics over some sort of bolt-on gun style conversion. The magic of the RG3 is in the head design. It features large pattern needle and nozzle geometry with an adjustable air cap. And unlike any other airbrush, the air cap can be fine-tuned for airflow to maximize atomization and minimize overspray while taking advantage of the large pattern needle and nozzle. The swivel color cup allows perfect positioning for whatever angle you're working at and it can hold enough paint so you won't find yourself having to stop at that critical stage of your painting. Most commonly the RG3 is sold with a 0.6mm needle and nozzle set, but a 0.4mm and a 1mm version are also available. Depending on your other airbrushes, you may find the 0.6mm ideal. Since I only use the RG3 for larger coverage, I find the 0.6mm size a bit redundant, so I use the 1mm. The extremely well-controlled round pattern of the RG3 will actually serve the majority of our modeling tasks, as we frequently need to get into nooks and crannies, like this 35th scale tank. However, Awada has attempted to broaden the function by marketing the RG3 with a fan cap. But like all fan cap conversions, the lack of a separate fan adjustment results in less than stellar performance. I've received emails from modelers who have ignored my advice and struggle with the performance from the fan cap equipped RG3. Interestingly, the parts diagram for the RG3 lists an air cap adjustment set for the fan cap model. But I've never seen this in place, and I can't comment if it works. Every RG3 I've seen only has the blanking screw in place. If you really want a proper fan pattern RG3, then you need to replace the head, change the needle and nozzle, add a fan cap adjustment, add an airflow adjustment, and change the name on the body to read G6 or LPH50. Both the G6 and the LPH50 are constructed using the same body casting as the RG3. I have additional information about these guns in separate videos explaining the Eclipse G series and the miniature LPH line. Unfortunately, the instructions with the RG3 are a little light on information for setting up the airbrush, so here's how I do it. First, set your air pressure. Looking at the chart, you can see that 36 pounds of air pressure is optimum. The RG3 tech sheet recommends between 29 and 50 pounds. Now you don't have to use that much air pressure, and I'm usually somewhere between 25 and 30 pounds. But remember, air pressure is measured at the gun, with maximum airflow and no material flow. I highly recommend using a gun gauge at least at first to get a feel for the RG3 with your system. Loosen the jam nuts so that the air cap turns freely. Attach the material cup and fill it with water. Start the spray and adjust the material flow to about what you think you'd normally use. Just to become familiar with what the air cap can do, start the spray and rotate the air cap all the way until you see the air back up into the cup. Then rotate it back the other way until you see the spray stop. This will give you a pretty good idea of what the range of adjustment is. Now in reality, as the tech sheet recommends for best all-around performance, you should end up with a nozzle protruding slightly from the air cap. A water suggests between 0.3 and 0.5 millimeters, but I prefer to do it by eye and sound. 
Rotate the cap back so the nozzle is protruding slightly from the air cap. Roll the air cap back and forth while watching the spray off the needle and listening. When the spray is just right, you'll see it coming off evenly all around the needle and you might hear a slight drop in the sound of the airflow. This should be the sweet spot where everything's working optimally. Lock the air cap down with the jam nut. As you gain some experience with the RG3, you'll more than likely settle into a comfortable air pressure and material viscosity that works for you. At that point, you can readjust and fine tune the position of the air cap if necessary. Painting with the RG3, like with any miniature spray gun, is different than with an airbrush. First off, you don't need to thin the paint as much. This preserves the inherent qualities of the paint. You make steady overlapping passes, keeping the gun at a right angle to the surface. Keep the gun moving at a constant, even pace. You gauge the speed of your stroke by the amount of material being applied. Because you get more paint down quickly, you keep the surface wet, minimizing overspray. This is extremely advantageous with acrylics because they dry so fast. The result is a super smooth surface. If you're a novice with a spray gun, it may take you some practice because you're probably used to waving your airbrush around. From 30 plus years experience with my RG2, I can honestly say that the only time I've removed the nozzle was when I changed it out for the one millimeter set. I'll pull the needle for cleaning and relubrication and occasionally remove the air cap, but that's about it. I do thoroughly flush the gun through the material inlet and exterior of the head as I show in my video on cleaning an airbrush, but I refrain from complete disassembly. After all these years, my RG2 is still performing like a champ, and according to the Iwata techs, I've long since beat the odds for problems with the old style seals. However, despite my advice, I know there'll be those of you who insist on repeatedly taking the gun apart. Well, I hope this video proves a helpful supplement and removes some of the mystery of the Iwata RG3. So long for now, and I'll see you next time.